humanist perspective presented by the New Orleans Secular Humanist Association, following our few principles of humanism. We're committed to the use of science and reason for understanding the universe and for solving human problems. We're skeptical of untested claims of knowledge, but we're open to new ideas. We are concerned with securing justice and fairness in society and in ending intolerance and discrimination. We are committed to the total separation of religion and government. We affirm humanism as a realistic alternative to the theologies of despair and the ideologies of violence. We reject the concept of an afterlife and believe in living a full and rewarding life here and now. We value and respect each individual's right to judge and lead their lives according to their own position as long as it's respectful of other people living in a free society. We hope you enjoy today's program and others in the weeks to follow. Hello and welcome to this evening's episode of The Humanist Perspective. I'm Jim Dugan, the Secretary of NOSHA, the New Orleans Secular Humanist Association. For more information about our organization, feel free to visit www.nosha.org. My guests this evening are the Big Easy Sisters. The Big Easy Sisters are a local chapter of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. The Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence is a charity, protest, and street performance organization that uses drag and religious imagery to call attention to sexual intolerance and satirizes issues of gender and morality. Welcome this evening to Sister Glory B on my far right and Sister Dire en Franc, also known as Sister Die. Hello. Thank you for coming here this evening. Um, I guess we should start a little bit more about the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, which is a national and even international organization. Tell us a little bit about that. The Sisters um, first got started back uh, in 1979. Um, exactly almost 40 years ago this coming Easter weekend. Um, there was four individuals that walked down the streets of Castro in uh, borrowed uh, habits from an actual retired nuns. Um, they barred them under the guise of uh, putting on the sound of music. So they decided to wear these down the street um, in San Francisco and thus started what we are today, um, an activist group that uh, not only does activism, but we also do education, fundraising. Um, we do everything with uh, humor and um, fun, more so than uh, the hard-hitting portions of it all. As you mentioned, uh, we were talking a little bit earlier, it's, it's kind of hard in a place like New Orleans to, uh, to really shock people just by going around in unusual dress and makeup. Yeah, but we really try. <laughs> we, we do our best, you know, every now and then, you know. So what kind of events here in New Orleans would people see you at? We do a little bit of everything. I mean, um, our personal events, we have, uh, we host bingo every other month. Like if it will it would do it in the odd months, so January, March, uh, May, you know, and so on. Um, and then we also have beer busts that we attend. Um, some of our junior members they have their projects that they do, so they can do. It's it's anything that we come up with. Um, we also have uh, other organizations that we assist with their stuff. So if they have a large project that they need somebody to come and and just be there, either work the door, work their um, raffles. Um, I get asked to do a lot of hosting um, because I'm one of the shyest members that we have. <laughs> um, I don't like to talk in public, um, but I'll host everything from a, you know, a leather competition for some of the leather organizations to anything, really. 
So uh, what kind of locations would you be at typically? And in, in, would you be at, at the Phoenix Eagle in New Orleans? At, or You can find us at the Phoenix. Phoenix. You can it's find us at the house, I think. Yeah. You have your own clubhouse. Well, That's, the Phoenix is kind of our that, clubhouse. Oh, okay. yeah. uh-huh. um, anywhere there's alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. that's very New Orleans. We don't, we're, we're not drinkers per se, but we sip on them a lot. Oh, just very slowly. Just always yes. have just a little drink to, to keep things moving along. Because it, it gives you something to do. Uh-huh. You know, you start your drink. <laughs> we have a two drink minimum for every event that we have to make sure that we don't go below that. In your personal consumption. You mean. It's a house rule. It's a house rule. <laughs> yeah. But. We're starting to expand. We, we we've done some stuff uptown, so we're we're getting we're kind of getting out there around the city. Mm. But yeah, you usually find us you know traipsing around the French Quarter, Maroney Bywater. So and you're you're assisting other local organizations mm. here. So this local chapter, you go by the Big Easy Sisters, and people can find that in on Facebook, right? Yes, they, yes sir. So the Big e- just put in the Big Easy Sisters, and they'll find you on Facebook. Um, and you, so you're mostly working with other local organizations, just helping them support their events or even helping them uh, 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 raise some funds. Yeah, the, um, we've done stuff with uh, NOLA PAW um, to help them. They have an annual event, a contest every year. Um, they also uh, do lube wrestling, and we've, I've been their lube girl a couple of times for them. Um, we've helped um, the uh, uh, Lords of Leather with a couple mm-hmm. of events. Um, the a couple of the the Mardi Gras crew, the gay Mardi Gras mm-hmm. crews, we've helped them with mm-hmm. things. Um, it's anybody that wants us there because I mean, look at us. We draw attention wherever yeah. we go, <laughs> so we can we can help bring more awareness to what Mm -hmm. you're trying to do as an organization just because of how we're dressed. So part of this is is helping other groups attract publicity just by being a little bit outrageous and the cameras will help find you a little bit. Yes, pretty much. (laughs) Whatever whatever an organization or a person needs, the sisters will will be there to do Mm -hmm. it, you know. Be that the MC or, you know, raising funds, whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. So we're there. The... We let our community dictate what mm-hmm. our purpose is. Mm-hmm. Um, we've, I, I know for me personally, I've, I've been out and just out at a, a typical manifest where we're walking around the French Quarter, and a young man pulled me aside. He had found out the week before that he was positive, mm-hmm. and he wasn't processing very well. So I spent pretty much the the rest of the evening just sitting with him. Um, allowing him to talk. So so we let our community dictate to us what what our purpose is going to be at that point in time, whether it be helping raise money for something or if we're ho- hosting an event and we're raising money for it, you know, we have our own purposes there, but we still let our community dictate how we're going to function with them at that day. And the thing to, to add to that, something about the makeup, it, it is very outrageous, but a lot of times it's disarming for folks. That, mm-hmm. the, that young man that he spoke with, it's strange how a clown nun, as, as it was described to me a long time ago, will disarm you a little bit and make you want to talk to them. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, you kind of shine out there, but it's also, you know, humbling and the folks will want to come talk to you mm-hmm. because of it. Not just for a selfie, mm-hmm. but also like you said in that. And I've had similar situations mm-hmm. like that myself. So you're offering uh, informal therapy sessions as well. Yes. Or just, yeah. Uh, Probably the cheapest <laughs> form of therapy you could get. <laughs> but it's, but it's, it's an interesting observation, though, that through being a little bit outrageous, people find you in some ways more approachable. Mm-hmm. You know? and I think it's also the sister mo- uh, moniker, or you know, because we we do bar do borrow from mm-hmm. that you know nun sister mm-hmm. sort of I don't know, Catholic ro- imagery. Catholic mm-hmm. imagery. So it's almost like they sort of expect it. We've had you know we've had a confession, like he just said. Mm-hmm. So people sort of see it, but they're not like, here we are. It's this big clown nun. Hi, what can I say to you? You know. <laughs> I mean, when you see, you know, going back to the the, the vernacular of of religion, um, which we are not a religious order mm-hmm. or organization at all. But Di, she's always she always has a flask with her, mm-hmm. and she's always passing out um, communion. Like she'll walk up to, do you need some communion? <laughs> so, um, Keep, yeah. And so it, you know, we it ties back into that whole. Uh, humor thing, like the irreverent humor that we have with it all. 
and it was once described to me by, by a couple sisters, you know, in my past. It, it's almost like we are the church for the LGBTQ mm -hmm. community, you know, but we're not the church. We're just sort of their church in their <laughs> own way, you know, kind of the church they need at times. At that particular you know, moment. At that particular moment, And yeah. I think uh, people who might be a little bit familiar with the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence would probably think of it as being composed mostly or exclusively of gay men, but you have some diversity in your local organization. Tell us oh, a little yeah. bit about yeah, that. Yeah, we have, um, one of my littles is a, identifies as Explain a, what a little is. Oh, <laughs> uh, my, a little for us is a junior member um, going through the ranks to become a fully fledged mm -hmm. sister. Um, you start out as an aspirant, then you become a postulant, then you become a novice, and then you become fully professed. Um, right now, she is at the stage of postulancy. So she wears the schoolgirl uniform. She has her little hat that she has to wear, and she wears it all in white, and the schoolgirl uniform's in black and white. Um, so she herself identifies as a heterosexual female. She's married. She has three children. And um, so we're open to any walks of life gay, straight, transgendered, um, non-binary, um, gender queer, or however you want to say it, whatever you want to be, as long as you come to us with an open mind, mm -hmm. you're, you're welcome to join us. Mm -hmm. um, we, if you find yourself drawn to it, we meet every second Tuesday of every month, um, and we're, we're open to anybody. The so, second, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. The second Tuesday of every month. Yes. And where do you meet? St. Anne's Episcopal Church on Esplanade. Oh, okay. Her great organization, by the way. I just <laughs> want to kind of plug them. They're pretty great. But um, yeah, so many different types of folks have found their calling. You know, Glory knows of knows of a, a, a father, a mother, and son. That did it, you know. I know of a heteros uh, I should say a heterosexual couple that's done it. So many different types of folks. Um, there's a couple of Muslim sisters. Mm -hmm. There's a few, you know, some Jewish folk, and then there's obviously, you know, atheist, agnostics, and everything, and pagan, and everything in between. We have a sister in in that was supposed to be with us tonight. Um, she herself is Wiccan. Mm -hmm. um, so, in you know, so it, it's open to anybody. Um, the it just as long as you have an open mind and open heart. But it's join. not. Uh, it's open and and it sounds like a lot of fun. But there's a serious side to the oh, yeah. process of becoming a, a sister because you have these uh, aspirant po novice postulant. Uh, tell, tell me that again. <laughs> aspirants. I have to stop and think about it. Aspirants novice. Aspirants postulants novices fully professed. Um, and it's just basically the knowledge portion of it all because we do ask that you at least understand where we started mm -hmm. so you can understand where we're going. Um, the the Big Easy Sisters have been here for six years. Roughly Ish. six years, um, and you know we're we're just a small portion of the forty years that the sisters been in in existence. Um, the but going back to the process, it's you learn each step. You learn something different. Um, as a aspirant, you're just starting. You you come to a couple of events. You don't don any makeup. You don't don anything. You just come as yourself. Um, then once you make your, your intentions to join the house, then you become a uh, postulant, and that's where you put on the white face for the first time, and you can do a very simple eye, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing too great or grand. Um, like you couldn't do something that dye, dye's doing. You could stick with the, like just the pink that I have mm -hmm. and maybe an eyebrow. Mm -hmm. um, no lips, no cheeks, because you learn by watching. You don't learn by speaking, so we don't give you a voice, which mm -hmm. hints the lips. Um, now the process for you, you also, to kind of confuse you a little bit more, you have sisters and you have guards. A sister is what you see before you now. And a guard is somebody that um, typically wears the pants. They're, they're kind of like our bouncer, our bouncer support yeah. personnel. They're folks that want to work with our organization, but they might not be as flashy or want to be as outrageous. You know, they have their own uniforms and, and their mm -hmm. own 
slight makeup. But their they, own codes to their do own what codes, they do. Their own codes, their own So things. there's a whole sub-community here where you have, th that are uh, your internal support and security mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, that are uh, not, just just a step down from outrageous. Yeah, some, yeah. <laughs> we will, I will say, this is a great house. They are not a step down at all. They, they have to do everything that we, uh, in a similar fashion, they go through the same process that they we have the do. Same the same rights and privileges yeah. that a sister has. But not, use not the same degree of of, uh, of makeup and, and dress. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's the only difference yeah. is the manner of dress. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I said, um, they, are the, they wear the pants in the family. We, we tend to wear the skirts mm -hmm. and dresses. But that don't get that wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I am there. shy and demure, and I will put them in their place. <laughs> No, in, I, in your I, own delicate yeah, in my uh, own way. delicate nature. Uh, um, she's a petite flower. Yes, I am. Um, our guards are very much of an important part of our house. Mm -hmm. They keep us in line. They don't, um, because some of our community can get a little too handsy with this. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They can get a little, especially with the alcohol prevalence of, of New Orleans, um, people can get very very in our face mm -hmm. and they help shovel us around mm -hmm. and keep us moving. Mm -hmm. um, they are our bodyguards at times. They are the ones that keep us on a time schedule. So mm -hmm. um, guards are important. Somebody needs to be able to, to drive the wedge through the crowd and somebody needs to keep track of the, uh, the yeah. clock. Exactly. Yeah, at your events. So. Na you nailed it. Because <laughs> sisters do not have a concept of time. <laughs> it's like herding cats. <laughs> Doesn't come with the territory. No. 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 So, um, how would you summarize the mission of your particular group? Just support who you can? You said let your community define, I think. In some the, the underlining mission of everything is to um, expiate stigmatic guilt and promulgate universal joy. I so think that requires some explanations. <laughs> expiate stigmatic guilt <laughs> is basically um, banish any and all guilt you have that is holding you back mm -hmm. and uh, uh, promulgate universal joy is to always be out there, be happy, be, be excited, be the clowns of our community, um, I, which I, I love that phrase that Di, Di touched on that a while ago. The clowns of our community is, is you always want to make sure that everybody's having a good time. You want to be the, the hostess, mm -hmm. make sure everybody's, everybody's enjoying what we're doing and how we're doing. So by trying to get rid of stigmatic, I might say stigmatized guilt, I guess, in a sense, mm -hmm. you're trying to help people overcome uh, self-doubts or internalized homophobia, sure. um, you know, accept themselves for who they are, and then go beyond just not having guilt or self-doubts or internalized homophobia, but replace some of that with happiness, with joy. I mean, and if you think about it, the sisters started in, in what, 79, when, you know, uh, after Stonewall, after, <coughs> excuse me, so many forces were saying that you are evil, mm -hmm. you know, just as we're sort of coming, you know, the gay community or LGBT folks are just coming out. No, go back in. And then here are the sisters that come in like, Bullshit. you know, we're not going to do that. <laughs> you know, so I mean, it's a little different now. I mean, you know, there were no, there were no, at the time when the sisters started, there were no gay straight alliances, mm -hmm. which are great, mm -hmm. but we're still fighting various stigmas, whether it be HIV or mm -hmm. bullying, bullying, mm -hmm. you know, you, know, you you have a little bit of everything. The sisters back in the 80s when the, the rise of HIV, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that they noticed was that people were, you know, they would, they would do everything, you'll be okay, you'll be okay, instead of going, you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. So people were craving that touch that mm -hmm. were, were lying there, not only physically in pain, but emotionally and mentally mm -hmm. in pain. They, were, they didn't have that touch. Mm -hmm. So the sisters kind of started noticing these things and that's why a lot of us will walk up to people and touch them and hug them and how are you doing and you know um, because a lot of that internal stigma comes from not being accepted and not being touched mm -hmm. so accepting somebody a lot of times is just a, a physical touch and that that right there is one of our biggest deterrents of that stigma and bullying is still an issue yeah. in, yes. in, in America today, um, especially for especially around the high school age. It's much, much more of a problem. The luckily with the younger generation, you're finding a lot of more acceptance mm -hmm. 
Um, my niece was was one that there was a young man in her class. I mean, she was probably a sophomore at the time, and they were making fun of him. And she stood up for him, mm -hmm. and she sat with him for a couple hours after school and just talked to him. And she was like, "You're not alone," you know. She goes, "I know multiple gay individuals. Um, you'll get past this. They're still friends today, but it's." It's, it's the younger generation that's going to make a difference mm -hmm. for us. So uh, moving forward, the, uh, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence is uh, a national and even international organization. Do you, uh, do you encounter other subgroups within that? Do you have yeah. events where you get together with other houses, you call them? Yeah, we have what's called... Um, there, there's a pro, not as there only is there a process to become a sister. There's a process for a, a city to have a house, uh -huh. and at the culmination of that process, they have what's called an exequator. And an exequator is basically where sisters from all over will come together. Mm -hmm. and big debutante ball. It's a big uh -huh. debutante ball in a sense, and then you know they, they are blessed and they by the main organization. Mm -hmm. And it's a big party and a big festival. I think we had the best ex-equator ever. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Yeah. We, we really when did, did you have your ex-equator? We, um, three, 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 four years ago? Four years ago. Uh, I can't remember. And we had a humongous second line and sisters from around the country came. Uh, when are you guys doing, an, when are you guys doing another huge event that we can come to? So <laughs> we've had we sisters win. even come visit us from, uh, France. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, they host, she helped us host one of our bingos. And then Sister Di was just in France uh, not too long back and got to visit with her as, as well there. So um, sisters are very interconnected. Um, we do travel to visit others for their ex-equators. Um, I'm getting ready to go to Houston in a couple of weeks to um, visit them for an event that they're, they've asked me to come to. So um, it's... We try to to visit as often as we can. Um, sisters, a lot of sisters come here just because of it being New Orleans, and will manifest for everything from Mardi Gras to decadence to just because it's a Saturday in February. You know, um, they'll come down and visit. So it's it's we're very interconnected. And if you're going somewhere, you, you know, you put the call out like I'm I'm coming to Paris. You know, who's a, who's a, you know I knew someone, but like I'm coming to Paris. I'm going to San Francisco or wherever. There's a house like who's there. Sometimes folks will you know like hey come stay with us, but we're doing an event or let's all get together. Sometimes it's simply a dinner. Like let's all go to dinner. Let's go have a couple drinks. You know, and sometimes we get you, you get all dressed up. The the sisters are also rooted in the the fairy community as well. Um, some houses are more fairy based mm -hmm. than others, just like some of them are more um, political based than, than others. Um, you, you kind of can puddle jump across the country and visit different houses. And you, know, you can get information about that community from various different ones as you go along. What do you mean by fairy? The fairy community is um, kind of a subculture mm -hmm. of the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know too much about them, mm -hmm. uh, just because I'm not one of the the fairy members. So, uh, so some of the houses uh, are a little different from each other. It, says, it, it seems some are more uh, like your group, more support oriented. Some are more activist. Some are more mm -hmm. political. It yeah. just depends on the need of that community mm -hmm. and um, like the DC house is a little more political than we are down here. Um, they got a lot of work on their hands up in DC. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, San Francisco of course is very political just because of the nature of that city. The city itself kind of dictates what mm -hmm. the sisters in that community are. So in New are. Orleans is just, it's hopeless, it's a party. Yeah, it's a party. Um, mm. What <laughs> you want to? You yes, it is. no, it, it is. It is a party. We we have a great time. We are a hoot and a holler. Um, but our city, you know, like there's so many because of whether it be budget cuts or something, or because it's, you know, like we're out there raising the money. But no, we have a great time doing it. That's for right. sure. Yeah. So we're we're down to something like four minutes. Um, I did want to ask you which of uh, events you especially like here. You mentioned a couple of local events. Uh, uh, we have Mardi Gras, we have uh, Gay Pride, we have Decadence, uh, maybe some other events. What stands out in here? Wh where do you have the most fun? All of them, <laughs> personally. And it's um, all the same? They're different? Uh, each one has their, 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 their qualities that attract us to it. Um, 
Pride, of course, everybody's going to come all out for Pride. Decadence, everybody's going to come all out for decadence. Um, I just think my favorite time is going. One of my favorite times is Pride. Pride has always meant a lot to me, mm-hmm. and I think going out as a sister on Pride is yes, I'm having a ball, but it, it always feels it, it, kind of like my sister's spirit shines a lot of Pride, and then it like decadence a little yeah. bit, you know. Because I, I think uh, compared to other cities, Gay Pride in, in New Orleans is a little bit muted in part because decadence is yeah. just such a gigantic. Right. event here uh, that other cities don't have. But I do like that they keep it separate. Mm-hmm. They they don't make decadence and pride one event mm-hmm. because it shouldn't be. Pride is kind of all-inclusive mm-hmm. where decadence is decadent. <laughs> just... a, little, a little over the top. It's, over the, it's definitely over the top. Um, what are some of your, your favorite moments in, in your time here? What stands out from recent events or for as long as you've been here in New Orleans as the Big Easy Sisters? There was a pride one year that um, a community member that uh, had talked about joining the sisters and stuff. And we saw him and his husband um, on the side of the street. And they had a little transgendered son. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were just spectators. And they came <laughs> right along with us when we passed by. We, they joined us. Mm-hmm. And um, in, then in recent years, there's been other family members mm-hmm. of community members mm-hmm. that have joined us in those. those. So it's, it's, it's always heartwarming to me to see the kids joining in to those events. Yeah. But the kids, it's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But... It, I think we talked about earlier, like, you know, right after Pulse, we did a thing, and this guy just walked up to me and just needed the biggest hug. Mm-hmm. And it's those little interactions, I think. I mean, it's great being up in front of a crowd, emceeing and, and raising money, but I think a lot of times those small so that's interesting. personal you're, you're, It's the small things that really stand out in your yeah. mind because, I mean, a lot of the things you do are kind of big, public, splashy kind of over-the-top sorts of things yeah. and there's going to be a lot of people around there's going to be noise there may be cameras but it's the little things that the little interactions mm-hmm. um, we've helped host a uh, thing for um, the upstairs lounge fire mm-hmm. and just getting those messages from the those that had been there and, and or new people kind of stick out in my mind as well. I think we could probably do a whole program on the upstairs lounge fire yeah. as yes. an aspect of history of uh, New Orleans and the way that that's memorialized. Oh yes, mm-hmm. that could be a couple episodes. <laughs> Um, I, I think this is all very interesting. I, I, I don't know that much about your group. I've lived in New Orleans for a long time and uh, somehow just don't fall over you that often. I'm kind of surprised. Um, we're getting down to the last minute or so. Uh, what messages would you leave our audience with? Anything in particular? I leave you with this uh, final blessing. We are all divine, just not that divine. (laughs) Some of us are more divine than others. Indeed, no one (laughs) is that divine. Sister Diarre en Franc, Sister Glory B of the Big Easy Sisters, thank you so much for being on this program this evening. 